What's up, Anomalies? And today we're going to be talking about writing, one of my favorite topics. I'm quite a nerd when it comes to writing, so in this video I'm going to be talking about writing and how one simple structure can make an entire story great. Now, this writing technique is the five-pointed wheel. The wheel is useful for thematical structure, so think of the hero's circle or the hero's journey as the bone work of a story, while the five-pointed wheel is simply the meat that holds it together. This is simply to help you create thematics and do the blurry bit in between structure and finished product. So today I'm going to be teaching you this five-pointed wheel and an interesting way to help you create stories. All of the people that have recently subscribed to my channel have come from my Dream SMP video, so I hope you guys stick around. If you want to make stories just like the Dream SMP and you want to be just as awesome as Wilbur, the gracious writer, then stick around for some thematic advice. And of course, leave a like. I really do want to do some stuff that isn't Dream SMP, but I need your guys' support on stuff that isn't. So if you like my normal Dream SMP videos, still watch this all the way through and see if you enjoy it. And of course, if you're new, please subscribe. It would mean a lot and we're heading to 10k. Anyway, let's get on with the video. The first point of the wheel is a reason to care. It's a reason for your audience to care about your story, draw fan art of it, make fanfics, do all kinds of stuff. So, how do you get people to care? Well, when people are talking about stories, they only care about one of two things. One is characters, and the second is information. You see, the audience needs likable characters to become invested in a story. Now, likable doesn't always mean perfect. Sometimes you can have characters that people are invested in that aren't specifically likable, and we'll get to that later. You see, characters can help or hurt a story, and sometimes, it's annoying to think, well, this character isn't helping a story, I have to get rid of it. You have to be careful about what characters you add and what characters are actually in your story and what characters are seen, because a single wrong character can easily send it all spiraling out of control. Your characters are just as important as any other part of your world. And finally, information. This can be used to describe your world or magic or world building, but it can also be an informative book, like learning about a war or teaching you about how to not die. Having likeable characters and interesting information, whether that be for the real world or for your own world, it will make people invested in your story. The second point of the five-pointed wheel is perception of humanity. This is one of the most vitally important things in the entire wheel. To make characters likeable, and or relatable, you need to add what I call a perception of humanity. This is a scale to prove to your audience that this character is human. The perception of humanity has three pillars. Emotional humanity, outer humanity, and inner humanity. I'll describe these in a little second. Kindness, anger, doubt, sadness, and envy are all perceptions of humanity in the emotion category. These are emotions that your character will actually portray in the story. A character can can be kind or he can be angry. Now these don't just mean the obvious stuff. An envious character doesn't have to be aggressively envious, they can be envious of someone so much that they try to become better themselves. Or a character could doubt what everyone else is saying because there's some kind of weird magic that means everyone is telling a lie. Next is the outers, which is mistakes, attachments, and memories. Mistakes are important. If your character doesn't make any mistakes ever at all, the audience can't relate to them too much. Attachments are also important. It shows that the character actually has history in the world and they aren't just plopped in. And memory is also similar, showing that they have lived there for a long time and have previous memories of the location. There are specific areas that are more important to them, less important to them. There are scary bits, there are, you know, not so scary bits. There are places where they feel comfortable, and there are places where they don't feel comfortable. And for inner humanity, you have passivity, determination, inquisitive, and confident. These are basically the basic personality types of every single type of character. Now, there are characters that kind of fit into either both of these, or a lot of them. But most characters ever created fit into one of these four little quadrants. A passive character could be a side character that doesn't care what's going on, or it could be a villain that is simply evil because they don't care about being good. A determined character could be good or evil, they could be determined to win, or determined to beat the villain, or determined to steal a bank. The inquisitive mind is a mind that is quite hard to predict. The smart villains, the chess players, the dreams of the world. And the confident are the people who have confidence. Maybe 
not skill to back up the confidence, but they are confident nonetheless. Now, a character should have a few of these to fully ground them. Of course, these are just basics. The actual details are up to you, but here are some examples of characters. X, the main character in my TV show, SCP Uncontained, go watch it please. For his emotes, X has shown kindness and sadness. And in the future, as I know the story of SCP Uncontained, I know how X is going to advance, and especially in episode three, episode four, and episode five, he's going to be showing attachment, memory, and mistakes. And for his inner humanity, I would say he has to be a confident person. He's confident in his power, and although he does have the power to back up his confidence, sometimes he can become a little overconfident. Now let's take a character you all know very, very well, Tommy in it. His main personality traits is envy and anger. He does does almost everything out of those two different emotions, although he has shown kindness and he has shown doubt. The main point of his emotions is envy and anger, and he has shown attachment, memory, and mistakes. He is also a determined character, but how about a character from a TV show? Finn from Adventure Time. Finn has shown kindness, anger, doubt, sadness, and envy. He has shown in quite large bursts all of these emotions. He also has mistakes, attachments, and memory, and he is also determined. So hopefully you understand how to add these together to create a character. Now let's do a little subsection of depth. How can you turn these on their heads? Well, by turning them on their heads, guess what? To create an interesting piece of depth, maybe turn the emotion onto its head. Kindness, but to an extent where this character will often put themselves in a bad situation to help others. Anger, but it helps them fight and be themselves and isn't really a bad thing. Envy, turns out to be envious is necessary in this story. And mistakes, their mistakes could always lead to something else or could always be the thing that solves the puzzles. Now, villains tend to be difficult because you don't want villains to perceive as a humanity. So a good way to make people not like a villain, or in, in the sense of making them a bad guy, is to get rid of their humanity. Instead of kindness, they show cruelty. Instead of envious, everyone envies them. Instead of mistakes, they're perfect. Instead of attachments, they have nothing. Now, the third point of the five point structure. World and world building. A vital part. Now, your characters and your world should do two things at the same time. One, fit, and two, not fit. That's a bit confusing, but let me explain it to you. Your characters have been molded, shaped, and changed by the world around them, just like how we are shaped and changed by our world. But the thing about a story is that a story can't be special if nothing and no one is special in the story. There has to be something that we don't see every day, otherwise the story and the book would be boring. There is such thing as an anti-Mary Sue, and that is something that is so normal, so average, in an attempt to not be special, that you end up having a boring character. Almost like every protagonist in almost uh, just so much, so much anime. Your character has to be different in some way. If it isn't, it's not an actual character. It's just another dude in the background. Now, you may think, but there's stories about normal people. Yes, but guess what? The fact that they're so normal is a speciality in themselves. Creating a show all about this normal guy and following his normal actions is gonna be so kooky and crazy because that isn't done a lot. So in concept, it is special. However, only done usually through a comedic lens. So what should I do to make my characters interesting in the story in the world? Molding and remolding. This is the technique when you craft a character to fit perfectly in your world and be an average Joe, and then change something about them. Basically, you make two versions of the same character, a boring version and a non-boring version. This lets you gather a better experience of what your character's experience should be and lets you know exactly how to change it. Let's take two examples of my characters. First off is Z. He's going to be the main character in my comic series whenever I get my drawing tablet pen and I can start drawing again and finish episode three and start doing, oh my god. Zed grew up in a world that is very, very similar to our own. So he's just like a normal Joe. So how did I make him special? Well, Zed has a very rare disease that gives him a different physical appearance. He has bright purple hair and strange markings under his eyes. He also has superpowers that go along with that, but that's not important for right now. The average mold is just him being an average teen. However, remolded, he stands out, he's been bullied, which means he's had a different experience, and also he has superpowers, which is cool. Let's take a look at Javen, a D-Class, a prisoner who follows orders and is used as a human guinea pig. But I remolded Javen. So how is he different from any other D-Class? Well, he's best friends with God. Javen is best friends with X, who is more powerful than any God. So, 
that's definitely something special about him. And now onto the fourth pin of the five pinned wheel. Conflict. It's super important to any story, and if your story doesn't have any sort of conflict, it's going to be a boring story, and I am sorry. But how do I make interesting conflict? I can't just create a bad guy out of nowhere. Or maybe you've created conflict, but it doesn't seem natural, or maybe it doesn't even affect the heroes, and there's no reason why they should try and fix it. Well, the fourth point is to break the hero's structure. Basically, find the hero's routine, their daily routine, the average day, the, the predictable and the predictable. What do they expect to happen? Find that and break it. Hero has a best friend who he relies on, kidnap the best friend. Or maybe turn the best friend into the villain, break the structure. Hero is used to hiding his identity, expose them. Hero is having a peaceful life, have their home destroyed. Hero is used to being the strongest, make a villain that beats them. Or maybe another hero that beats them and then this whole competition arises out of it. Or maybe a hero that is used to war and combat, he's used to this unpredictable nature, put him into a spy mission, put him into a situation where everything is predictable and see how he reacts. The only way to create good drama is to break the structure. Find your main character, find any character, find their daily life, find what do they expect to happen and tear it apart and make them feel pain. And five. The final step, change. Change is vital. Whether at the end of a TV show, at the end of a single episode, at the end of a book, at the end of a chapter, it doesn't matter. There has to be change. If your character doesn't change in any sort of way, then there's no point in following a story. But what counts as change? Basically anything. If a character learns how to control his power in a chapter, that's change. If a character realizes that his favorite food is actually made of rats, and now he's sad, that's change. Maybe they change for the worst. Maybe they lose a friend, or they realize they're not as strong as they used to be, or they got rejected by their love, love of their life. That's change, and change is necessary, and change is scary. Changing your characters can be terrifying, because you don't want them to be the not cool people. And making the show, I'm gonna get real with you for a second, no cuts. Making the show, SCP Uncontained, has taught me a lot. You see, I began the show with the thought process in mind of I wanted to create a super strong, super impermeable character. And I wanted to see if I could make a show that was still good, even with a main character that was basically God. And in the few years I've been doing SCP Uncontained, I've only made three episodes, well, four including the pilot, and the third episode isn't even out, so three is out right now, but it changed a lot. Every single time I made an episode, I learned so much, and I will continue to learn, and I'm not at the peak yet, and I've learned how to write stories and how to do it, and yes, you may look at my show and say, it's shit, why should I take advice from you, but the problems I'm facing is not with thematics. I can make a whole video looking at every single one of my episodes and taking a deep look at my intention, showing you how I created interesting backstories and, and quirky little details that everyone missed that changes the whole perspective of the episode, but the thing about it is the structure. You see, you can write as many stories as you want in your head, but until you get them down on paper or on a YouTube video or anywhere, they won't change. There are some things you can't learn by watching a YouTube video. There are some things you can't learn by reading a book. The example I use is you can go to a school and spend five years reading about how to ride a skateboard, but never touch a skateboard. And you graduate top of your class and you grab a skateboard, you go outside and you will fall over. You will fall over the first time and you will have to learn it all over again. Because there are just some things in life that you can't learn by other people teaching you and you have to learn yourself. So, if you're sitting there, if you want to write a TV show, if you want to write a book, if you want to make an SMP, I don't care what you want to do. I don't care. I want you to start doing it now. If I want to be known for anything, if I want to inspire you to do anything in the world, it's to start now. No matter how young you are. If you want to make cartoons when you're 40, start making them now when you're 9, or 10, or 11, or 13. I began making my TV show when I was 16, right? But guess what? Most people, myself included, wanted to start it when I was in my adult phase. So that means I have four, maybe five, maybe ten years of extra experience that I couldn't have learned as an adult. There are some things you just cannot learn in a book or in a YouTube video, and watching this video might help you realize that, but 
Just me telling you these themes, just me telling you the five point wheel won't make you good at writing the five point wheel. It will just give you a little bit more knowledge to make you good at writing a story. The real secret of writing a good story is to just start writing. And yes, your first books will be bad, your first episode will be bad, your first chapter will be bad, but that doesn't matter. Because if you made it first, good first try, you, you wouldn't know what was bad about it, you wouldn't know how to change, you wouldn't know how to develop. Making bad things is one of the best parts of writing, because you learn. You learn the most by making bad things than you do by making good things. When you fail, you know why you failed. When you succeed, you don't always know why you succeeded. This video has gone on for a long time, but if you're watching to the end, I don't care who you are. Start your dreams now. You might think, but I can't do it as well as I could when I'm 20. Yeah, but you'll still do it as shit. If you wait 20 years, you'll still be as shit as if you started right now, today. Make a YouTube channel today if you want to be a YouTuber. Start writing your book today if you want to write a book. Don't stop waiting around. Time is limited. Time is running out constantly. And all you're doing is making your future progress worse by not getting experience now. Do it now. Never wait. If there's one thing you want to take away from this video, the secret of writing a good story is to write bad stories. To write stories in any sort of way, whether bad or good. Maybe your first thing will be amazing, but that doesn't matter. You have to write. You can't just watch videos all day. You can't just sit there and go, I will make it when I'm older. You have to do it now. And if you don't do it now, you'll regret it. You'll regret it. Because if you spend five years at the age of 15 doing it, you will have five years of experience by the time you hit 20. But if you start at 20, you'll have to wait until 25 to get the same amount of experience. Do you want double the experience? Do you want double the skill? Or do you want to wait until you're old and still be just as crap? Please, for the love of God, start right now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. And if I don't see you there, I'll see you in the next life. If I don't see you there, I'll see you on the flip side. If I don't see you there, I'll see you in the void. And if I don't see you there, well, I love you. And I want you to know that. And I want you to know that you're special. And I want you to know that no matter how bad it gets, I'm always here for you. Even though we might not know each other, I want you to look at my videos and I want you to smile. That's all I've ever wanted. I want to be your friend even if I can't know you. I want you to be happy. So if I don't see you in the void, I hope you're happy. I hope you find a better place. I hope that in time, everything bad will fix itself and you'll be happy and you'll live happily. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you.